Hello. So let's simulate a discrete common emitter amplifier. Before we do that, let's do a quick analysis to see what we expect. Let's start with the DC or operating point analysis. All capacitors are off. Open, they do not affect the analysis. So we have a common emitter amplifier here with a four resistor bias network. The voltage at the base here will be the, the voltage divider, 20 K over 20 K plus 220 times 20. And if we do this operation, we'll see that it's approximately 1.6, 1.7, 1.66. Right? I'm talking about 20K over 20K plus 220K times 20. That's the voltage at the base. We have a voltage drop. So this is of around 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So this is approximately equal to 1 volt. 1 volt over 2K, we expect the current to be 0 0.5 milliamps, the emitter current. And therefore, the collector current is around 0 0.5 milliamps. 0 0.5 milliamps times 20K gives us 10 volts. So we have a 10 volts drop. And so we expect 20 volts minus 10 volts, the voltage here to be at 10 volts. So this is what we expect. So 1.6, 1, and 10 volts. And a quiescent current of around 0 0.5 milliamps. So let's do an operating point analysis and see if that's the case. So the voltage here, we expected around 1.66 or so, 1.6. The voltage, that was the voltage at the base. The voltage at the meter, we have a diode drop. So it's going to be close to one volt. There you go. And the voltage at the collector, since we have 0 0.5 milliamps uh, for the collector current or the meter current, approximately equal, this is going to be around 10. Okay. Let's look at the current to make sure that we have something close to 0 0.5 milliamps as we expected. And boom, we got it. So the DC is right. Now for AC, now all the capacitors, if we design them right, look at the previous video, <coughs> And the frequencies that we are operating in this case is at uh, um, one kilohertz. They should be short. So you can short all the capacitors. And what do we expect? Let's calculate the gain. I mentioned that the gain that we expect is the resistance that you have at the collector over the resistance that you have at the meter with all the capacitors are short. So in this case, we have RC. We also have an R load, which is very large. So it's like if it was open. So in general, this is going to be, if we take the R load out, it will be RC over, which is the resistor that we have connected the collector. Resistance at the meter is the small RE prime plus, if the capacitor is a short, it will be our RE in parallel with RG. And we mentioned that either you can bypass it completely, in which case you have maximum gain. The maximum gain that you can have in this case is minus RC over RE prime, or maximum temperature stability, where you are swamping RE. Remember, this is BT over ICQ, approximately. So 25 millivolts at room temperature over 0 0.5 milliamps, 50 ohms, but it changes <coughs> with temperature because Vt changes two millivolts per centigrade. And so we typically want to swamp it by having an RE that is much larger. So we have RC divided by RE prime plus if we make it open, if we open this, RE, which will be approximately equal to RC over RE. So these are the games, maximum to minimum, 
and in the intermediate, we can control the gain with RG. So in this case, if we have a 10 mega ohms, the parallel combination of a 10 mega ohms with RE is approximately equal to RE. And so the gain that we expect in this case will be 20K over 2K approximately, so 2K plus 50 ohms, approximately 2K, so a gain of 10. Let's see if that's the case. So let's do a transient analysis. Oops. Let's go actually step by step. What do we expect a B in? We expect a one kilohertz zero point five centered at zero, so five hundred millivolt signal. Once we go, this is coupled at the base. We expect the same signal. But what was the voltage at the base? Around 1.6 volts. So that's what we expect. At the emitter, we expect also the same signal. If this was the output, this will be an emitter follower or a common collector amplifier. It will be the same as what we have in the base, but instead of being at 1.6, it will be approximately at 1. Okay. So no amplification. But if we look at the collector right here, we do expect an amplification of what? A gain of, in this case, we have 20K over the resistance at the meter, which is RE prime, 50 ohms, and then the parallel combination of 2K with 10 meg, approximately 10, 2K, slightly less than 2K. So 20K over 2K will be 10, and this will be centered around 10 uh, volts. So at 10 volts, we have signal with a gain of 10. And if it goes to the coupling capacitor, now it will be centered at zero and delivered to the load. Okay. So we had a 0 0.5 volts input and we get a five volts output. This is what we expected before we did also the analysis of the capacitors. Remember, these are RC circuits, and so if you look at, if you want to look at the frequency response, it is going to be, let's, let's take a here, 1 over 2 pi RC, right? Now, what is the R? Is the equivalent R that you see in, in RC, sorry, in AC. So the R looking in will be R1 in parallel with R2 with R E prime and then the two resistors in parallel there with a beta increase. So let's do an AC analysis and see that. What we expect is that the output, let me not plot the face, and let me add the grid. Yep. So we have the pass band as we, as we design it, with a gain of 10, 20 dBs. You can see here that we are at 17 dBs around 36 hertz, so this will work. We were conservative in our design. Now, the coupling capacitors enable us to simplify the design by isolating the DC and enable us to inject the AC signal that are going to create this high-pass filter behavior or this attenuation at low frequencies. So you, you need to design the capacitors based, choose the capacitors based on the frequencies of interest. The high-frequency effects here are due to the internal capacitances of the transistor. Now let's look at what happens as we change the RG. I'm going to name this RG since it controls the game. Okay. So let's do it in AC first. So if I choose 
the RG of 150 meg, sorry, of 150 ohms, this will give me a gain of approximately 100. We calculated in the previous problem, which will be 40 dB. Let's see if that's the case in an AC analysis. We got it. Right, so 40 dB is that. So now this RG can control the gain. In the limit, if we put it very, I'm going to put it to one, okay? It's the maximum gain, which will be 2K divided by approximately 50, 50 plus one ohms, okay? So 2,000 divided by 51, okay? That's, oh, sorry, 20K. So around 400. Then boom, you get it there in the DBs. Okay? Now this is the AC response. If we do a transit analysis, we can see that at these voltage levels, we are going to have saturation, etc. Because we can we don't have that much voltage swing. So let's actually look at that. Let's start with the 10 meg that we had before, or the 50 meg. In that case, our gain is going to be at the output. So we have our input and our output, right? 0.5 volts at the input, five volts at the output, the gain of 10. Let's increase it. Let's do a gain of 100. Now, in order, if I do a gain of 100 by putting this to around 150 ohms, it's going to saturate, right? But let's see if this works by putting a small signal. I'm going to say this is one millivolt, one milli. Okay. So if I have one millivolt of the input, I will get 100 millivolts at the output. Now, Due to the nonlinear characteristics of the transistor, you see that there's a little bit of this distortion. The upper side is a little bit higher than the lower side, so slightly, as you can see. And uh, this will work for anyone that we decide, right? So if if we, inc I mean, this RG is going to control the gain. And if we make it very large, we go back to a gain of 10. If we make it very small, like one ohm, so we are bypassing our E, it is going to be a gain of 390 something. That's the maximum gain, okay, 350. But notice if we do a temperature sweep, it will change significantly because we are not swiping, swamping the RE, the emitter, the small signal, base emitter junction um, resistor, which is temperature dependent because PT is temperature dependent. Okay, let's see what happens for more normal gains. So, 10 meg, gain of 10 at higher voltages. Let's do one volt. Now, at one volt, we're going to have a problem and is that we are going to saturate. Why, why is it that we are saturating? Um, we are clipping. It is because, notice, so we have our input here. Now the voltage at the base is going to be at 1.6 volts. At the emitter, it's going to be at one. And this is going to affect the maximum swing that's why we wanted to put it as close as possible to zero, one volt. Over here, we don't have all the all the swing for to go all the way to zero. And look at what happens. There you go. That's the effect of the saturation is due exactly to that. Okay. Remember that the transistor needs a collector. The collector emitter voltage needs to be around 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 volts, 0 0.3 volts in order to be in the active region. 
Now notice that the RC, RC and R low form a voltage divider. So the circuit, of course, can be loaded. And the output impedance it's going to be approximately equal to RC, 20, 20K, which is not a great output impedance. We will see that in, in future videos in analysis. Let's stop here. Thank you.